<laughs> and I need my paper ready as well. Right, we're ready. Here we go. SHCF News. Oh, 20th of November. SHCF News. And now, the news. Paper and glasses at the ready. Good evening, everyone, with your host, Andy, for the tonight's episode of SHTF News. Breaking news tonight. Loads of top stories. Um, as we like to do, we follow our agenda of SHTF News. What's hitting the fan? And we'll go through the top stories, disaster maps, space weather, cyberspace, economics, and more. So stay tuned. Hold on to your seats. <laughs> Let's see if we can get through the sheer enormity of the things going on around the world. So, first up, top stories. Let's do it. So, obviously, loads going on in terms of... Um, oh, how can I even say? Yeah, conflict brewing. And uh, this is specifically to do with the China versus Australia with the submarine issue and um, what their thoughts are. On Australia going along with this deal and um, you know the the rhetoric's kind of ramping up there's zero nuclear capacity technologically in Australia that would guarantee you will be trouble free you will be incident free Wang said further and if anything happened are the politicians ready to say sorry to people in Melbourne and in Adelaide so basically they're not very happy about Australia getting together with the um, they've basically declared that they would take the side of America and the UK in any conflict between China and Taiwan, right? And, of course, China's not liking the idea of that. So, you know, we might see some tit-for-tat going backwards and forwards, maybe some import-export sanctions, maybe some other stuff like that, start ramping up with some economic wars going on between China and Australia, so watch out for that. Worth keeping an eye on. Um, so yeah, I've heard people talking about this in the chat as well uh, before we went live. Agricultural disaster after record rains caused catastrophic floods in British Columbia, Canada. Um, and for those who follow the Canadian prepper, he did a great one today on that um, in a bit more detail about the disruption to supply chains and things, critical supply routes that come through um, with all the infrastructure has been taken out with the, the roads, the bridges, you name it. Uh, it's bad news. And of course, all the contamination of the fields and the sewage systems and it's bad news. It's potentially one of the most expensive floods. Um, and this is like a one in 500 year event it goes on to talk about. So, yeah, this isn't anything to be ignored. And uh, this is going to have a, a long, long term effect in Canada across East and West. Right. And uh, again, for those who want more information on that, probably a good idea to go and check out Canadian Prepper later on. Um, and uh, you'll see he did a video on that and he breaks it down quite well. So, yeah need to look out for that and we'll have a look at the uh in a minute we'll check out the windy map and we'll see what the accumulation of rain is due for the same area and it's not looking good you know it's not even it's not finished yet right let's put it that way so and again floods in india this time got at least 26 people dead and more than 100 missing after massive floods and landslides hit in southern india and um so of course this is happening in more than just one place and we need to be aware of all these new Threats with the way the weather's rocking and the floods and, you know, there's lots of activity in the skies happening before these floods and suspicious things like that. So, you know, who's to know whether this isn't part of something else, right? Particularly when it comes to wiping out anything to do with agriculture, supply chains. We already know they're heavily under attack. So um, we need to watch out for more of this kind of destruction. And who knows, we could even be seeing weather wars between countries, right? It's been talked about many years ago. They've had the technology for many years. So when I see things like this going on in certain places, I have to start asking myself the question, are these natural or not, let's say. So uh, a bit on the biometrics. I saw this coming out recently where they're now rolling out the biometric passports to Armenia, Nepal and Zimbabwe and also they're extending that to Afghanistan. And um, I thought it was worth mentioning because this is the sort of thing that we can expect to start seeing more and more. Um... And for those that don't know, there's a, there's a lot of um, there's a bit of kind of uproar about this in various countries, and various um, data scientists and things have raised their concerns over the biometric based um, passports, particularly because it doesn't really use like a decentralized system, like a blockchain based technology that doesn't hold everything centrally, 
um, and it also doesn't contain it within the, the device itself. Whereas what I've learned recently, which is the opposite way of doing it, and I've developed stuff with RFID technology in it in terms of, you know, circuit board design and things like that. So I'm very familiar with it. And on here, for example, I just thought I would, um, here we go, this one, biometric passport. And it does actually mention here, this is all the countries you see that have already compatible with it or opted to go with it, right? And they're just adding more and more countries all the time. Now, the USA is already with it. Now, essentially what it is, like an RFID chip contained within the passport. But for those that don't know, what's unusual about it and the reason why people have got an issue with it is that obviously the problem with an RFID chip embedded in the passport is that it can be read remotely. And that's not just by the authorities, but other people as well, right? So it creates somewhat of a security flaw. Also, it actually contains your photo and biometric identification. So that's fingerprint ID, photo ID, and an iris ID as well on the actual chip itself. Now, usually you would just on the chip hold some unique ID reference um, code. And then you would have a sort of data, an external database system that you would compare against. And then you'd bring up the information you're storing on that from a remote location based on the ID code, right, is far more difficult to compromise. Whereas this e-passport chip is actually containing the information on the chip and it doesn't actually look like, and as, as a computer programmer, I can tell you now, it doesn't look like it's even encrypted. And in fact, I think down here, so literally you could just swipe anyone's information. So basically what they're saying is the government is sanctioning something that is going to purposefully put people's security at great risk. Yeah, so here we go. Look, United Kingdom, add it out. We've got North America as well. Um, I've rolled it out, and I noticed down the bottom here somewhere it, it talks about um, it talks about how it creates a bit of a security issue. So that's it. Doesn't look like they're stopping that. Basically, was my point. It, they're rolling it out more and more, despite all these concerns. So you know, of course, we all know that this is going to be the long-term plan, rolling that all into one central. Um, social credit score as well and sort of medical healthcare based score and things as well if you know what I mean um, into the one so we'll keep our eye on that for you and see if we see any more developments on the front of um, the biometrics because it's all happening very quickly and um, before you've talked about one technology they're already rolling out the next thing that's how it's done so <clears throat> this is something I need to bring up because it's something that may come up soon and it's not just smallpox, it's smallpox plus Ebola that will soon be released. This is about, um, and I can't show you too much about it, but let's just say, let's just say that this is the thing that they talked about and then quickly didn't talk about anymore. And then when you look into it, you realise there's quite a few links between the Ebola that's been talked about and the hemorrhagic fever and combined with the smallpox that... Billy No Mates has been talking about recently, ironically, coincidentally, along with new patents around surrounding this exact same thing at the same time, if you know what I mean. And let's just say it reminds me of that time where Billy and his, and his husband sitting there on the sofa and he said something along the lines of, and you know, if they don't pay attention to this one, the next one will certainly get their attention let me know in the chat and in the comments if you know exactly what I'm chatting about. Moving on. FDA asked federal judge to grant it until the year 2076 to fully release Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine data. <laughs> so the federal government shields Pfizer from liability, gives it billions of dollars, makes Americans take its product, but won't let you see the data supporting its safety and efficacy. Not for 55 years anyway, right? So basically we've got to be... Um, we got to be waiting until 2076 to until they'll let us know if it works or not uh, and if it's safe or not. So those those that are part of the uh, control group who are part of the group of people who are, you know, in the trials of not having it, um, they're going to have to wait until 2076 now until they can figure out if it's safe or effective to take it or not. So that's interesting, isn't it? Wow, amazing. And they're granting it as well. Wow. So, absolutely incredible. And check it out. There's loads of this going on. People are getting way carried away with their with their measures, right? It seems to be turning into some sort of a mentor side for those that watch after school. Um, series of videos. There's a great one there. 
titled something to do with menticide, worth watching if you haven't seen it. But this demonstrates exactly that so epically clearly where basically children if they're if they're suspected of being ill of anything they basically lock them in a little closet locked in from the outside without a key so the this this parent was basically called up from the school to tell her that her child needed to be picked up because he was showing signs of illness and having a cold and basically she went to the school to pick him up and him and a bunch of other kids were locked in this room yeah and they said he was in the gymnasium. She went to the gymnasium to have a look and he wasn't there. And then went back to the reception. They said, oh no, he's in, the, in one of the rooms in the gymnasium. Went back and the door was locked and had to wait 10 minutes for a teacher to come along with a key to unlock the door. So good job there wasn't a fire, isn't it? But it's only obviously for his safety. Don't forget. Absolutely crazy. So... And it gets crazier because now they're resorting to offering a free trip. Well, how do you even say this? A, tree, a free trip to a brothel for 30 minutes with a lady of your choice in exchange for getting a jibby jib jab. Have some of that. Yeah. So, yeah. So those in Australia, Austria, right, who are being given basically the option, if they're still not convinced that it's good for them, then you can go and basically... I don't even know what to say about that. How desperate is that? I thought French fries and burgers and lottery tickets and all that were already pushing the boundary of sanity and, and rationality, but now I have seen it all. So, absolutely amazing. Yeah, WTF indeed. Everybody in the chat live with us right now. <laughs> oh, man. So, what we got up here? UK could follow Germany and plunge unvaccinated Brits into lockdown, expert warns. So, this is based on, obviously, Austria, places like that. Um, Germany and Austria plunging unvaccinated into lockdown style measures. Basically, if you're not vaccinated, you ain't going out nowhere, sunny boy and sunny girl. And sunny in-betweens. So... Yeah, and now obviously the minute the minute they come out saying UK could follow, right? We obviously know what that really means. You might as well just say will, yeah, because we know there's a reason why it's called the lockstep plan because everyone is supposed to be in lockstep. That's it. That's right. So, or maybe they're doing it alphabetically. Start with the A's, yeah, Austria, right? Roll it out alphabetically. Maybe they felt that was. That was um, so. Germany and Austria begin lockdowns of the unvaccinated. We find ourselves living in a time of medical fascism, absolutely incredibly. Okay, and what do you even say about that? So why the fourth lockdown? I mean, and do you know what you can say about that is what everyone else is saying about it out there. Check it out. This is what's going on right now in Austria. Look, this is the kind of things. This is what people think of the. Um, this is what people think of the measures. Yeah. Not happy. I don't think the brothel thing's going to work. By the looks of it. I don't think the brothel thing's going to work. This is Vienna, look. Desktop audio. Let's not peek it out too much. So this is Austria. Obviously, today is a worldwide freedom rally as well, which has been record turnout, as you can see from the ticker banner down there. So, yeah, it's all going on in Austria right now. Look, some more footage here coming out of um, Austria. I'm not sure where exactly that is. Um, but it doesn't look like they're going anywhere anytime soon. And again, it doesn't look like burgers, lottery tickets, brothels, any of that is going to be cutting it. Not going to be cutting it at all. So, yeah. And then we got this one here. Again, Austria. If you complied, this is your reward, essentially, is what they're saying. Um, and uh, hold on, let's rewind it for you. So basically what you've got going on now in Austria is people, ro the cops roaming about and just peeking on people and asking to see their... The papers, le papier, le papier, le papier. Yeah, just like it was back in the day. Prove you now you're 
guilty until proven innocent. You're guilty of being out when you shouldn't be, so you need to prove that you're not guilty of being out when you shouldn't be. So we're going to pull you over, we're going to hassle you in the shops. Is there any wonder we are seeing what we are seeing out on the streets? Cause and effect is what I call it. If the uh, big G's hadn't figured that out by now, then maybe this is all on per Maybe this is all by design. Maybe this is the point. Maybe this is where they want people. Maybe before you can rebuild, you need to first destroy what already exists, if you know what I mean. So again, not looking good. And it doesn't just stop there as well, because we've got stuff going on. Um, and again, this gets a little bit more and more heated as we go, um, which again, with the, with the measures going on, it's kind of like, you know, like I say, cause and effect, right? Um, you can't expect to try to pull that off. So, and then we've got here, Jesus, sorry. And then we've got, um, oh, sorry, I've got the, I do apologize um, if the audio was a little bit echoey. I noticed I've had the, the speakers on as well, which I shouldn't have, do apologize. But um, Austria again, um, this is obviously due to the um, lockdown of the unvaxxed and things in Austria. And you can see, um, you know, not happy chappies. And uh, what you'll also, also notice as well is that all of these people in the marches and everything, none of them are wearing masks or anything. So it's quite clear what this is obviously about and uh, where they stand in it all. So, you know, and it doesn't stop there. We've got here, look, we've got going on in Berlin as well. Yeah. So there's, uh, you know, I know everyone's feeling it, right? And, um, you know, obviously when people are seeing cops doing stuff like that to people who are already restrained, then, you know, it just adds insult to injury, no pun intended, if you know what I mean, right? And for those who didn't catch it the first time, knee in the face, have some of that. Thank you very much. Judge, jury and executioner as per usual moving on and it doesn't stop there because it carries on and now we're talking about guadeloupe so france basically but kind of caribbean right um where same thing yeah lockdown restrictions vaccine mandates cause and effect 100 percent cause and effect so you know it's been really seriously kicking off in guadeloupe look um this is kind of what we expect Austria to look like and then following each country as well who tries to pull off these mandates this is what you're going to see in every country without fail so like they said you will never what was it you'll never watch the revolution on the telly or something like that <laughs> you'll, ne <laughs> you'll never be shown the revolution on the telly but this is it this is it that looks like a similar clip doesn't it so yeah, and then again we've got um, more from Guadeloupe. And those who haven't seen it, this was the firemen, the fire service, who obviously have been told as well they're going to be mandated. And if they are not vaccinated by a certain time, so they set up their hose to get the cops with it and um, take a few of them down. They've got their own water guns, look. <laughs> oh dear. And look at this geezer runs in there to turn a tap off. What a ball sport. You know, trying to have a nice little little bit of water fight in the sun yeah bit of harmless fun in the sun and they have to go and spoil the fun and turn the turn the taps off there's always there's always a karen somewhere to ruin everyone's fun isn't it <laughs> and again guadalupe check it out yeah again this isn't going anywhere anytime soon so you know this seems to be um yeah entirely correlated with the levels of you know restrictions regulations tyranny corruption equally you get similar measures of turnout in direct correlation to that so wow so that's the top stories uh, and i can see it going wild in a the chat there totally um you know <laughs> it, it's pretty pretty gnarly out there right and like i say unfortunately this isn't going anywhere this is only going to increase and you know klaus schwab him said warned you all when he said about you, we are entering a very violent and angry time, he knew what he was talking about, right? Hegelian dialectic, problem, reaction, solution.
Next up, disaster maps. So let's get into it. Let's close some of these windows down so we don't completely overheat our sizzling system trying to maintain all of these windows open for all the SHDF news. So let's get into it with a disaster map. So see what's going on. We know there's a few things that we like to check in on that concern us. And of course, today, particularly, we've got these floods over here in Canada, um, which are well documented here. And um, we'll have a look on the windy map and see what's due coming in. Um, but yeah, we've got some earthquakes as well rocking about. Had a bit of activity there. Um, and another volcano in Indonesia started kicking off Peru as well. Um, so it's not less activity, it's more. And uh, so that's ramping up. Moving on to the earthquake maps. We've had 40 earthquakes today, not including the La Palma quakes, because of course they're removed and censored from the USGS map. Um, and if we order these by uh, small, uh, sorry, newest first, and uh, we can see the Philippines here with a 4.9. And we've got, um, what else we got going on here? Not too much. I saw one in Texas, a bit unusual. But mind you, no, nah, that's all right. 8.2 kilometers. I was going to say, if it's if it's five kilometers deep, it would just be a fracking quake. But um, five kilometers is fracking quakes, by the way. You usually see them in Central America, Northern America. Um, but yeah, let's have a look and check in on the La Palma situation then, because I noticed here, let's do a quick refresh if it's going up or down, 57 quakes, um, quick refresh, 59 quakes, it was going up, uh, during the past 24 hours, La Palma volcano was shaken by four quakes of magnitude 4.0 and above, that's a big increase, 14 quakes between 3 and 4 magnitude, and 59 quakes between 2.0 and 3.0. So that is definitely, definitely ramping up. The last time this was a high number, that was 41, if you remember. It was 41 quakes between 2.0 and 3.0. And we're seeing a lot more above 4.0 as well. And look at this map. It's just an absolutely littered. Littered. Yeah? There's no wonder. <laughs> There's no wonder that the USGS map doesn't even show any quakes at all on the La Palma. Because if it did... Yeah, rather than being <laughs> rather than being faulty, it would be like hundred and something. Yeah, um, so that's ramping up. And uh, if we have a look, we can check in live. Just to give you a quick refresh to make sure we're absolutely, totally, and utterly live, uh, beaming straight in there from uh, La Palma, courtesy of Afar TV. And uh, you can see it's an absolute mess, absolute mess. And um, it's this is significantly different to how it was actually 10 minutes ago so let's just make sure that nothing's epic has just happened but this is what happened the other day you see so i wanted to show you this um it's basically created a new what they call a tongue i'm pretty sure it's called a tongue and there's a new tongue of lava that's entered the sea and it's a bit of a concern because those that don't know when the hot lava hits the sea it combines with the sulfur in the seawater and the salt water and creates basically poisonous gas, yeah? And if the wind directions aren't favourable, then it can be a big, big problem. And in fact, in a lot of earthquakes, it's actually the, the exhaust gases, the volcanic gases that kill people, not, the, um, not necessarily the lava or anything like that. It's literally from the poisonous gases when it hits the sea. And this big, massive tongue has made its way into a new part of the sea, basically. It's creating its own, its own shelf. It's just a phenomenal amount of energy there. So, um, so yeah, that's taken out another few hundred homes as well, I believe. Um, so, of course, it's not looking ideal, is it? And um, with these extra quakes as well, it's just going to destabilise that, that rift, that ridge of the mountainside, because there still remains that threat of the tsunami, don't forget. We've got 6,500 foot high mountain, nine miles wide. That's a lot of volume of rock, yeah, that could hit the sea. But I'm not actually sure this is all going on in the right place. But it, overall, the entire area is quite destabilised at the moment. So we really need to keep our eye on that. So let's have a look at the windy map then. This shows us the uh, SO2 levels, sort of so forth, sulfur. Um, basically, this is what will create the acid rain. And you can see this is where it's emanating from here, La Palma. And you can see the wind's actually blowing it quite erratically around here, coming up as far as northern Europe Look. Um, a lot of the time that will just stream straight out across here or it will go straight up maybe like to the northwest 
and um, and by the time that happens it's obviously filtered down a bit but it doesn't look like it's too strong even if this dark area here we're only talking 63 don't forget if it's less than about 72 just to 80 you don't got to worry too much about the chances of things like acid rain are pretty minimal and to be honest acid rain's a problem at the moment with all the stock all, all the um crop losses and everything we've seen um already happening so many places acid rain is a good way of losing a load of crops as well don't forget um, and let's have a look as well. This is the rain accumulation map, courtesy of Windy. And this is where we're interested in here. Look, so this is rain accumulation the next three days. And if we plonk a pin down here, we can see 195 millimeters, uh, which is about what nearly an inch in old money. Um, so 148. But if we go next 10 days, look, accumulation combined of water coming in here, look, 329 millimeters. So that's more than a foot of rain, more than 12 inches of rain there, look. More than that, look, 15 inches, 37 centimetres, essentially. Yeah, look, 3.8. So this is the rain accumulation, don't forget. This isn't going to fall in one day, but this is the problem, isn't it? We've already seen epic levels. What was it, like a month's worth of rain in two days or something like that? Correct me if I'm wrong in the chat. Um, but yeah, so we've, all, we've, we've still got more coming in. And I think what we could do with doing... Just check the windy map here and we can see the direction. So if we alternate between the rain accumulation here for you right and you'll see this area here is over the next 10 days and so we think and we see this area yeah and if we go on a wind map we can tell that that's going to be heading into the same area look right and we can forecast along and you can see the systems moving in look so this is wednesday the 24th yeah moving up to thursday another band there yeah so Let's do that for the rain. Um, let's go rain accumulation. And um, next 12 hours looks like they're going to have a little bit of a let up. But you're still talking about still talking about an inch of rain coming in the next 12 hours. So again, bad news, you know, thoughts go out to all those all those affected. And of course, this is exactly looking at this disaster map here. Um, you know, let's face it, this is why we have the prepare and share segment because it's more and more important now to be preparing and making sure you've got supplies, making sure you've got your routes figured out if this route fails or that route's been flooded, if you've got somewhere to go, um, which again, good idea to have some sort of a bug out bag or a you know, go bag at least in your car. Particularly coming into winter time, we've got things like snowstorms, you'll have ice, you'll have ice building up on power lines, snapping the power lines, power down scenarios, you name it, is going to be coming this winter, I guarantee you, some places in the world. So let's keep our eye on it and make sure those some places aren't where you are. And if they are, let's hope that we're all prepared in, a, in, in advance. So let's move on then, space weather, and um, see what we've got going on in the world of the space. And to allay your fears it doesn't look like we've got too much going on uh, currently with the sun there's a coronal hole stream here coming in you see this black number 20 here this black area here is a coronal hole and you usually just ramps up the solar wind speed here and you can see a little bit of a step up there in the solar wind speed as that turns into earth directed but it's not anything to cause us any ish and you can see here on the um K index is looking all right as well. And but what I would say is looking through on the visible solar disk, you see we've only really got these two sunspots here, 2897 and 2896. And as I've mentioned before, a good way to see if we've got anything to worry about is you can just check out on here, you'll see it will show you the sunspots that are visible. Yeah, 2896, 29. If you click on those, you'll end up here. And this magnetic class here is alpha. Don't forget, that needs to be alpha, beta, delta for it to be um, the sort of configuration that's going to cause any flares. So these are looking pretty stable. They're not really anything to worry about. Both this one and the uh, 2897 look, they're both just alpha. So we haven't got much magnetic mixing going on. But what I did notice, um, and just quickly to finish off on this, you see green boxes all along the top for the general space weather. And the Enlil Spiral as well is looking pretty clean. I think there might be just that coronal hole stream featured on there. Coming out as it fades in. Doesn't look like it. It should be at the end here when it ramps up. Look, let's fast forward it. Nah. So we've not got much to worry about there. However, what I did notice is this. 
this is this is always worth checking the backside because don't forget last month when we had the break in live news where we had the x fly right that that is on its way back round and so you can see here it says that 2891 days until return four so in four days that's going to be coming back round and you still see here it says still active question mark and it says possible right so next week we'll be looking to see what's going on with this 2891 as it comes back around the limb of the sun onto the earth facing side where it can start causing us maybe some more problems again but we'll have to see you know we'll keep our eye on it but at the moment it's looking like we haven't got too much to worry about from the sun but we will keep our eye on that sunspot as it comes back around into earth view um, later on in the week and of course i'll be bringing you the breaking news during the week but it won't be from this channel more on that later so let's move straight in there then what's next cyberspace let's see what's going on in the world of hackers and ting hackers and the internet and ting and uh see if we've got much to worry about it's not looking too bad again it's uk it's always the united kingdom top of the top of the list of attack targets and it's always typically the united states the top of the list of attack origins but both sitting around you know three billion and three million um which is about average so again it's not looking like there's anything epic going on that we should know about um or should be worried about and um yeah it's looking reasonably normal and it does change throughout the day in different times when things are more active. But typically on a Saturday, a lot of people aren't in their offices. They're not working in the offices. So it's not a typical time where you're going to see maximum attacks during the week is where you would start to see this ramp up. And usually on a Monday, Monday is the best day to disrupt businesses from a cyber attack point of view, for those that didn't know. Down detector, I'd like to have a quick look in on this. Uh, we'll give it a quick refresh. I noticed there was a few things that were down earlier. Sometimes they've already recovered in time. Looks like Tesla's back up and running. Look, that was having some problems earlier. So I mean, everyone's stuck on the side of the road. <laughs> I'm sure that's not the case. <laughs> so yeah, it looks like some of the gaming elements are um, had some problems earlier, but that's okay because they're all watching this show anyway. Like everyone should be. Ultimate live show, innit? <laughs> so yeah, it's looking not too bad. Uh, doesn't look like there's anything too epic. Um, no, no problems with PayPal or anything like that. So there's no excuses there. <laughs> <Dig -a -dunk. laughs> so back to the agenda. Let's have a look, check in on the economics and see what's going on with the cryptos and uh, bits and pieces like that. And uh, we have got a reasonable sea of green here, but you'll notice the uh, Bitcoin's dropped below that 60,000 mark. It was on 63, 64 last week. So uh, we're seeing some some stabilization on that it's a it's a pretty big heavy area of resistance that's 60,000 so it does bang up against that resistance mark quite a lot and of course there's a lot of where resistance comes from is where you have people who put certain trades on to say automatically when it drops to or when it gets to 60,000 sell it and anything that's a round number is basically hard to break through because there's a lot of people that maybe buy it at 50,000 you know, they might only buy $100 worth, but they'll buy it when it's $50,000 a Bitcoin. And they'll say, they'll, they'll type it into the actual trading platform to say, if it gets to 60000 sell it for me so I can make a profit, right? And because people are lazy, they type in round numbers. So for those that didn't know, the areas of resistance always come from those really weird um, layers where people say and of course what happens is is when it gets to 60,000 all these automatic cells all happen yeah which pushes the price back down again because there's lots of selling happening so there's got to be more people prepared to pay more than 60 than have already decided they want to sell at 60 and that's where the new all-time highs come from um as time goes on and you see a similar thing with ethereum when it hit when it gets below 4000 it tries to push above 4000 it's all in the news can it break through 4000 of course oh i'm gonna sell it if it's 4000 so you know there's a lot going on there and again i keep meaning to do a separate video to highlight some of the things that are happening in the in the space um i noticed that the entire i've always said that the the thing to look at is the overall market cap um <clears throat> i mean you, you, some of it you have to take somewhat with a pinch of salt, but it's at least enough to give you an indication of what the trend is. Is it on the way up? Is it on the way down? Are people putting money into it or are they pulling money out of it? And of course, typically when you see a lot of money going into the crypto space overall, this is total market caps. This is combined amounts of money going into it, not just Bitcoin price, right? And um, and we we did get as high as three trillion. We're now sitting at two point six trillion, and it was up at two eight two point eight million before. And it will be back up that again. But 
So, yeah, it's kind of a tricky one. Um, but all in all, it's looking all right. And this um, Solana is doing incredibly well. Um, and uh, as is um, Avalanche as well. There's quite a lot of new technologies that are based on the, the Solidity, basically, software system, um, blockchain smart contract system with Solana. So you'll see a lot of action going on there. And I really need to bring some stuff with you because there's so many things going on with the biotech side of things. I think it's really important for people to have a good understanding as to what we're up against and what's coming down the pike. And it's all connected, right? So I think, I think that's, we've got to the end of our, how did we do for time? I don't even know what the time is. I've got a new design coming up, actually, which includes the time at the end, but it won't be on this channel. But and more on that <laughs> later. So that has been, wow, the SHTF News. Extra extra long broadcast on, on that. I hope you enjoyed it. For the 20th of November, 2021, I've been Andy. Back to the beach.